It's really an honor to be here today. I guess I'd like to uh, to start at the very beginning by just talking about the business that we're in. Uh, it's Studio 33 Cafe, right? Station. Station 33, okay. Station 33 Cafe. We want to get that right because I, I'm hopeful that a lot more people from Hampton and from surrounding areas will come to uh, Station 33. We also have Island Girls, what's, Island Girls Diner, where, and where exactly is it? Okay, let's say that loudly. Ocean Westway, West, West St. John. Saint John. So for people who are thinking about uh, needing to go to a diner. And Angie, what's the name of your business? Sussex Sleep Clinic and KV Sleep Clinic. So Sussex Sleep Clinic and KV mm -hmm. Sleep Clinic. So in case you have uh, sleep apnea yeah. and uh, that, that challenge uh, is something that lots of people have. So uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that we, we started our day talking about small businesses. And for myself, for my colleague Miriam and my colleagues Elena and Karen, uh, that's the way for us to start the day today. We want to make sure that we're, we're thinking about uh, the real challenges that are uh, facing businesses and that we're addressing them. We're addressing them with measures that can make sure their business continues to be successful and make sure that they feel confident to make the kind of investments that they need to make to make sure our economy grows. This, uh, this week is a big week for small businesses in our country. Plus tôt cette semaine, le Premier ministre et moi avons annoncé que le gouvernement baissera le taux d'imposition des petites entreprises à 9%. Uh, we, earlier this week, the Prime Minister and I announced our government's intention to lower small business taxes from 11%, which it was 2015, down to 9% by January 1st, 2019. And we know that this is making good on a promise that we had in our election campaign. But there was a second part to that promise. We said that as we lowered the tax rate, we wanted to make sure that it would actually go to small businesses and that it would help them to grow for the long term. We didn't want to make a system change that would just reduce taxes for a small subset of already advantaged Canadians. So the way it works now, today, the wealthy are encouraged to incorporate just so that they can pay lower taxes. Sometimes paying lower taxes than a middle class person paying far less. So that does two things. It gives the already successful an advantage not available to other Canadians and it, Canadians and really looks to someone who's trying to start a business that they don't have the same advantages as people who've uh, already, already been there. So we know it also creates a situation where the small business rate is used just to create personal tax advantages for uh, those who've already been successful. Our commitment is to fix this. We understand that many, many small businesses are using their corporations to save for the future by making passive investments. For the vast majority of corporations, the overwhelming majority, this isn't a problem. But in a very small number of cases, as I said, it gives wealthy people an unfair advantage over and above everyone else. So we looked at the different measures in our tax code, and we believe that this particular issue around passive investments represents one of the biggest advantages enjoyed by the wealthiest members of our society. To put it in context, we estimate that right now there's somewhere between 200 and 300 billion dollars in passive savings sitting in these private corporations. This is money that's not being invested into active businesses. And it's generating an additional 20 billion dollars a year in passive investment income. Just to give you a context for where this is, 80% of that money is held by just the top 2% of private corporations. So essentially, the more successful someone is, the bigger the advantage that currently exists. Le système n'est pas juste. Et nous allons y remédier. Pour ce faire, nous avons bien écouté. We heard that some people were concerned with our measures, that we were going too far. We heard that for middle class business owners that passive investments can be a very useful tool. They help to save for new equipment, a renovation for an office, or potentially to protect the business in time of a downturn. But for small business owners, they can also provide 
for the flexibility to save for a parental leave or for retirement. So what we heard through a period of consultation is that we needed to understand exactly how people use these rules to save not only for their business, but also for their family affairs such as parental leave, sick days, or retirement. The challenge of balancing family with a business was something we heard throughout our consultation. And I want to know, I want to people who are listening to know that that was something that Elena and Karen brought heard from business owners this morning, but as we heard during this consultation, we heard the importance of making sure that we could balance people's ability to have a business with their, their family challenges and deal with that as an important part of our measure. And so, with that feedback in mind, we're moving to a system that we believe is fair, one that will recognize the contributions of, of middle-class Canadians, that will recognize the contributions of small businesses, and do that in a way that doesn't provide advantages only for the small subset of wealthy Canadians that are already uh, doing well. So we're going to do this by introducing into our measure around passive investments a threshold for passive investment income of $50,000 per year. That's equivalent to about $1 million in savings. And it means that for about 97% of private corporations, there will be no tax increase on investment income. Going forward, we'll make sure that income over the threshold is taxed in line with someone who takes home a paycheck every couple of weeks. We understand that as we move forward, we have to consider the past. We know that many people built savings and nest eggs under the current rules. So we want to be absolutely clear. Existing savings and the income from those savings will not be impacted. Les épargnants existants ne seront pas touchés. And by cutting taxes for small businesses, we're helping small businesses to save even more. We didn't design the system we inherited, but we're absolutely committed to fixing it in a way that encourages investment, but that doesn't create advantages only for the few. So our goal is to move forward with a fairer system. This is an important part of our government's promise to make sure that the economy grows, creating jobs, and helps the middle class to succeed. What we know is that when everyone succeeds, we all do better, the economy does better, and we end up with a better situation over the long term. So I'd like to thank people who are here for their input this morning. I'd like to thank Elena and Karen for their ongoing input and uh, say that you know, our ongoing goal will be to keep taxes low for middle class Canadians, to enable small businesses to invest with that small tax rate, and to make sure that our economy creates opportunities for all. Thank you. And I think now we're, we're happy to take some questions if there are questions. You mentioned the new threshold. So what will be the revenue implications for the federal government? How has that changed now that you're going to put in that, that, that threshold? We've talked through the course of our uh, consultations about the need to make sure that the system works. Uh, we've also said that what will happen through this is that there will be uh, some changes that will result in some revenue for the federal government. Uh, as you've seen, we uh, have lowered the small business tax rate, which actually means we're going to be passing back that revenue to small business owners across the country. What we saw is the uh, income sprinkling measure. So that means uh, businesses that were passing income to family members that were not in the business was something that represented in the order of 200 to 250 million dollars to the federal government. Of course, lowering the small business tax rate means we're effectively putting that money back to small business owners. Continuing the ability of small business owners to have family members in the business to get paid, much like at Island Girls, where their family is in the business and they will continue to be in that business contributing to the business. With respect to the passive investment income, we can't give the exact revenue yet because we're going to make sure we get the actual measure correct. We're still going to listen to Chambers of Commerce and others to make sure we get it exactly right. What I can tell you is that the revenue is orders of magnitude greater than that available in the uh, income sprinkling. And we will, on an ongoing basis, be thinking about how we can make sure that that 
uh, revenue is something that enables us to make the system that much better for middle class Canadians. If you regret, if you regret about the turmoil or the uproar that's been caused in recent weeks, coast to coast in the small business community and the medical community to a certain extent, and your critics who have said that your original consultation was clearly inadequate, any regrets about the way this has been handled from day one? I'd like to take you back. In our election campaign in 2015, we said to Canadians that we wanted to lower the small business tax rate on page 80 of our campaign document. We wanted to do that at the same time as we made sure that the tax system didn't create advantages that were only there for the wealthy few. We said that we were going to look at Canadian-controlled private corporations to make sure that we weren't creating a dynamic that led to tax rates that were different for the very successful from those who are less successful. So we started in 2015. By my budget in 2016, I announced a council of tax experts to look at this. We looked at it for a year. My budget 2017, we announced that we were looking at three measures. And then what we did was, after having given that pre-understanding to Canadians, we put out a consultation paper for 75 days of detailed consultation. I will tell you that I know now, uh, what I knew then is that when you make change, it is difficult sometimes for people who like the status quo. What's most important though, is that we have a system that works for all Canadians. So we need to listen to what people are telling us are consequences, and we did that. We need to make sure we get the measures right, but we're not going to rethink our objectives. Our objectives are a system that provides opportunities for all that doesn't create advantages just for a few. Because we have people arguing exactly how we should move forward, we need to listen. That is, after all, what a democracy is. Getting it right is important. We think we've gotten it right, and we don't think there's another process that would have allowed us to get that input to get to the best outcome, which is where we believe we are today. How did you come to the, uh, the $50,000 number? Is that, is that going to be enough for people that need to make more significant investments with their saved capital? Like how, how did you come to that number? We looked at the, the situation that we currently have in small businesses across the country. 85% of small businesses have no passive investment income at all. 97% of those businesses have uh, a relatively modest, if any, when you look at it, and 2 to 3% about 29,000 out of the 1.8 million private corporations hold 80% of the assets. So what we're trying to make sure we do is balance the need for people to invest in their business with the goal of making sure that we don't create an advantage only for the few. But let me tell you the process, because it's really important. I had people like Elena Lockhart and Karen Ludwig roll up their sleeves with us during the consultation. Tell us what they heard. So the only way we get to good conclusions on things that are as complex as this is if members of parliament listen to their constituents, try and understand the issues, and come up with ideas around solutions. So you asked about the $50,000 passive investment income, which equates to about a million dollars. It's trying to get a balance. So when Elena tells me from her experience in running a business and from the people that she's spoken to how this might work, or when Karen tells me what women entrepreneurs or, or women professionals need in terms to save for, for maternity leave, that gives us the sense of what we should be doing in terms of creating a threshold. And that's how we came to the threshold. We, we considered that input to get to something that we know for the overwhelming majority of business will be very positive. It will allow small business owners that need to keep money in their business and don't want to use the RRSP system because it's not as flexible as they might like to invest in their business and to have money for a rainy day. So the only way, as I say, to get to the right answer is to listen. And uh, I think we're really fortunate that we have people like Elena and Karen who are bringing forth positive ideas to get to the right outcome. Hello, sir. 